Tendesh Kudur is joining us. He is a BAFTA award-winning filmmaker and National Geographic fellow. His work spans from elusive snow leopards in the Himalaya to the Okavanga Delta uh, in Botswana and the endangered Kemp's Ridley turtles in Mexico. His documentaries have aired worldwide on prominent networks such as National Geographic, the BBC, Netflix, Discovery Channel, and Animal Planet. Sandesh will take viewers on a journey into the Himalaya today during his talk. But before I bring him in, he did share a little video clip with me that uh, he asked if we could share. So let me get that video up on our screen for us, and then we'll bring Sandesh in uh, and say hello, see how he's doing today. Um, there it is. Here we go. All right. Wow. That was, that was great. That was such a, a well put together clip there. I'm going to bring Sandesh in right now. Hey, Sandesh, how are you? Hey, hi, Joe. Hey. I'm well, thank you. How's it going? Good, good. It's been, uh, it's been a busy week and we've been bouncing all over the world. It's been a busy Sunday. Uh, World Biodiversity Day. So great to have you joining us for a little bit today. Thanks so much. We just spent uh, our morning up in the canopy and took a little while to get back down here. And um, and I think I was on the wrong time zone trying to wait for your uh, for the talk. So um, so yeah, thanks for uh, hanging in there and waiting to get this started. Oh no, of course, of course. I know you're 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 in the field. So just being able to connect with you. Uh, it is a real pleasure, and we're looking forward to you taking us into the Himalaya a little bit. Do you need to share your screen today, Sandesh? Yeah, let me uh, try doing that right now. When most people think about the Himalaya, the first thing that comes to mind is um, snow-covered peaks, high mountains, barely any oxygen, and here I am sitting in a light t-shirt, uh, and 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 the other thing that comes to people's mind is of course snow leopards and of course if you add to all of the other things in snow leopard habitat yaks and if you look in the background there's some ibex as a little partridge now that is of course the typical himalaya and the typical notion that comes to people's mind when anyone says himalaya this is what they see. They see the snow abode, and that's what the Himalayas are. It's the abode of snow. But where I want to take all of you today is not into the lofty, snowy mountain peaks we all know so much about. It's actually into the area underneath the glaciers, below the glaciers, and above the floodplain. And this is where there's an entire hidden world, a completely hidden world, and um, and that's what this journey uh, is all about. I'm just going to try to make this one full screen. Into hidden are experiences. It's the Siang and got uh, Started uh, National Traffic a couple of years ago, and they fund into the 
spending time over the last decade with Prof. U.S. Dr. Baba. He's a pioneer in the escape and done several projects to get table books and was about an area of India, the uh, biodiversity hotspot, and that made a lot of impact. Based on we decided we'd do another book, and this time it's going to be up in the Himalaya. But we, of course, didn't want to take on the entire Himalaya in one go. So we said, let's focus on what is perhaps the most biodiverse part of the Himalaya, and that is the eastern Himalaya. The Himalayas between Nepal, Sikkim, Bhutan, all the way up to Arunachal Pradesh. Now, this stretch of the eastern Himalaya has two of the deepest gorges on the planet. I mean, these gorges are five vertical miles in depth, there, uh, on the far western side, you have the Kali Gandaki Gorge in central Nepal. And on the eastern side, you have the gorge that I am currently in, the Siang Gorge. Now, these are two defining boundaries for this mountain. Uh, there's a life that has not crossed the gorge from one side to the other. And it kind of like kind of defines this one landscape. And that kind of became our boundary uh, to do this project about the Eastern Himalaya. And over the course of uh, five years, we kind of like went step by step from the floodplains, from um, uh, a place called Kaziranga, one of my most favorite parts of India, which is a big, tall, moist grassland. The grass is so tall, it even hides elephants. It's an amazing place. And it's India's little Serengeti. And this uh, grassland is on the floodplains of the Brahmaputra River. The, the river floods. As a matter of fact, this is the time that it's currently about to flood again this year. And when it floods, the animals get pushed towards the mountains uh, on the southern side. And that flood is what brings in minerals from the Himalaya, all the minerals, all the different species of fish, everything, lots of things come in and really makes that uh, floodplain what it is and the reason why it's so rich in life. And it supports an amazing population of the um, one-horned rhinoceros. Uh, it is the place where you have all our big five it has Asiatic elephants, water buffalo, rhinos, um, the swamp deer, the barasinga. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a place, it has the highest density of herbivores in, all of, in this part of the world, really. And as you get up into the mountains, you start seeing the snow leopard, but you start seeing an even more elusive animal, the clouded leopard. And that's been uh, one of the felines that I've been going up the last couple of years and finally managed to capture it on a camera trap um, for my documentary, Wildcats of India. So that was, was really amazing to get this cat on camera. And this area also hides a lot of other amazing secrets like the, um, the Atlas moth. Uh, as you get higher up, you get into the world of the plants, um, of course, we have the golden langur, and there's a whole variety of species, herpetofauna. Many of them are in deck. Many of them, uh, this is the um, arachophorus, it's a tree frog. Uh, this is the green snake and glass lizard. Uh, this is a legless lizard. So it looks like a snake, but it's actually actually a lizard here. And then you have species like this, Chapalura. It's a species still waiting for a name. Uh, we found this on our expedition to the eastern Himalaya a few years ago. And 
it's been years and there's still not a name that's been put on the species. We are very, very blind in our taxonomy in terms of identifying species. As a matter of fact, uh, in one of the reports that came out between 1998 to 2014, there's over 500 species, 500 new species of plants, amphibians, fish, birds, invertebrates, all sorts of um, species that over 500 has been accounted for. And just our expedition right now may add probably another 100 species to this list. I'm not, I'm not an expert yet to say that, but we've had a, an exciting month. And um, I'm actually going to take you out to meet our team and give you a quick debrief of how things have been over the last uh, uh, month or so. But like many places with rich biodiversity, there are a lot of threats and road building across the Himalaya being, being, being a very devastating way of um, destroying this landscape. Dams, uh, just the state of Arunachal Pradesh where I am, there are nearly 200 dams being planned along these rivers, along these rivers where we haven't even accounted for what species live here, dams are being built before we even know what's there. So we're never even never going to realize or even know what we've potentially lost or going to lose. And dam is the other bad part about it is um, in the Himalaya you have a lot of erosion. So with that you have dams that are going to fill up and be absolutely dysfunct in the next 10, 15 years. As a matter of fact, I sat with a dam engineer who commented with me um, and said, oh, these dams last a long time. And his definition was 15, 20 years. So you can see the short-sighted mentality of the kind of uh, development, destruction, that's going on in one of the most biodiverse parts of the country. Our again is to go and document some of these landscapes before they are doomed by dams. And by putting dams, we don't even know the long-term impact it's having on sustainable livelihoods, uh, living on small fish downstream, and the millions of lives that these dams will actually affect in a negative way once they are built. And when you think of those big, big long-term destructive projects, um, little bits of poaching here and there, hunting becomes very new in comparison to the power that we have as humans to destroy landscapes in ways that are just not repairable. And we really need to rethink the way that these sensitive landscapes are used for our benefit, but in ways that are sustainable. Um, yeah, I'm just going to skip through our couple of slides going into clouded leopards. This was one of uh, a very promising story that we did on clouded leopards that came out as a documentary. But my job as a uh, storyteller is bring together stories of hope, uh, bring together stories that unite people to a common cause, and that cause is that of sustainable conservation of landscapes, which are, of course, inhabited by many different people, and these people need to retain their cultures, retain their identity, but at the same time, they are the stewards of this landscape. And I fear that in our race to modernize and in our race to, um, uh, to get ahead of our neighbors, we sometimes are putting not just biodiversity at risk, but also the ethnic diversity of these landscapes. And as a storyteller, I try to bring in the cultural as well as the natural um, uh, forms of life and put them together in a story that binds people and unites people to become 
a part of this landscape and become a destructors that we sometimes that we are and um, and then taking uh, this book to the Dalai Lama and presenting it uh, to him as he is one of the main stewards of this landscape in the Himalaya uh, he can further the message of conservation and bring about the message of hope which is what we need uh, hope and action is what is the need are and with that in the in the process of the research that led to the making of the the book about this this part of the himalaya we came across the zoological results of the abor expedition this was a punitive expedition by the british in 1911 1912 and when in during that time they were trying to find find the source of the brahmaputra river and on that expedition they literally collected every single frog tadpole reptile uh, uh invertebrate and and they drew out all these meticulous sketches and it was it's probably one of the most amazing detailed descriptions of the zoological and floral diversity of this landscape and there's very few places in the world where you can go and find such an incredible volume of work that was done over a century ago so we decided that it would be an amazing thing to go back 100 years later go back up along the siang and go and find all the things that they found 100 years ago and see what we can find right now as a matter of fact we are ending our expedition and coming here right now and we started the expedition on earth day and we've ended it now on world biodiversity day so i'd love to um take you out and meet the team that's here with me right now they're all working in their different corners so if we can um uh, joe if we can switch over to our video uh, call i'd yep. love to take this laptop and um get everyone to kind of like meet the team that's out there who's been exploring this landscape and they'll have some amazing tidbits of work every we have everyone from an entomologist to a botanist to a molluscologist to a um, uh, a person studying yeah reptiles herpetologist mammals everyone they're all here so i'd love to take this camera out and um yeah. take you for a spin to show you what's going on out there in- yeah and this can, can you hear me okay now i can hear you yes okay and can you see me are you back on the the call screen yes i'm on the call screen now perfect let's do it let's meet the team this is great all right let's see if i can i need to carry my hotspot with me all right all right so so we're in a place um, along the siang river it's called um, the abor river camp that's where we are at and this has become our bit of a base camp after living out in some rustic places over the last uh, couple of weeks so our first person right here all right meet priya singh she's been out studying rodents and she's currently uh, cleaning her uh, the rat traps hi yeah. priya singh how hi. what's been your experience well it's been bit of sweet i would say we've had um, great luck with some species and uh, and uh, not such great luck with other species um, mammals uh, are generally hunted in this landscape so we've been struggling to get them on our cameras or in any other way but uh, but yes we did find uh, a very interesting species. species of butterfly and um, this is a butterfly that was described in 1915 and after that it was seen only once in 2016 in a place um, about uh, 500 kilometers west of here as crow flies i would say and uh, and we came across uh, a significant population of this species here it's called the kalinaga aborica that's the latin name and otherwise it's called the dark freak and so yes um that was very exciting super thank you 
Yeah, so that's the uh, the butterfly that's actually gotten, gotten everybody excited. She's just made a post about it on Instagram today. Um, as a matter of fact, if uh, folks can follow hashtag Expedition Siang, they'll see a lot of our quick highlights that we are starting to put out. So that's the Kalinaga. First time or second time seen in over 100 years. So that's pretty cool. Oh, and here's our... Here's the rest of our big team over here. They're in the middle of packing, packing all their uh, stuff. All right. Ready, Ganesan, for your highlight? So here's uh, Ganesan. He's our botanist. Naba, that's Naba. And uh, Ganesan, both from Atri, Ashoka Trust. And you can tell us about your highlight. Today, today's quick highlight. Yeah, uh, today's uh, highlight will be about a tree that has been collected uh, uh, in 1911 by the accompanying botanists of this uh, punitive explore expedition, Dr. Mr. Burkle. So he collected this specimen from uh, the meanders of uh, uh, Siang River, uh, the, the same location. Uh, just just in the backyard of our uh, uh, abode camp and and uh, it has been described as a new species of uh, uh, Hopia genus from this area and it has a name that uh, fortunately the botanists retained uh, the local name uh, Sing King. Sing means tree and King means uh, the, the, the sound of the uh, of the uh, dough when it uh, when it is used to cut the tree. So uh, the Abor, uh, uh, sorry, um, the, the Siang uh, indigenous community, uh, Adis, extensively uses it to build their houses. And a uh, few of them have probably showed uh, spillers and rafts in their houses that has been used by their grandpa. And uh, they, they are very excited to get to know that internationally that particular plant species is known as sinking uh, so that really excited me because uh, after 1911 no botanists have really documented uh, its presence here and internationally it has been considered that it has gone extinct so uh, so the, that uh, the resurrection of this particular species from extinction is a real highlight of the day <laughs> and no one had ever collected the flowers even back then so these are the flowers of the sinking tree that he's just gotten today, as a matter of fact. So there's a lot of writing up that um, that needs to be done about all these cool species that have that have resurfaced, that have been found again. Wow, that's amazing, Sandash. Yeah. Hello, I'm this... Arvind. I work on freshwater and terrestrial snails. Uh, it was an exciting one-month uh, expedition here in East Siang District. So district of Arunachal Pradesh. Uh, after 1912, no malacologist ever came here and surveyed or collected uh, land and freshwater mollusk. I could collect more than 70 species uh, after 110 years and many, probably many of them are and some of them uh, share uh, the biota with the Chinese uh, elements as well as from Southeast Asian uh, region and probably there may be many more species to be discovered from this region. Yeah. Yeah, so lots of exciting stuff on in on the snail world and here's Surya, our herpetologist. Hi. Hello. Uh, been here for a month now uh, exploring the whole Siang Valley. Uh, came up with a lot of expectations looking for a lot of reptiles. Uh, actually got a lot of more, a lot, lot more. And uh, in the Bur expedition, I think uh, they got a lot of reptiles. And I actually got a, quite a few more than what some of those they missed. So it's been a very interesting trip here. Uh, hope once we get back to lab, we'll know what, what these are. Some of them, I don't know what it is. Let's go back and check. <laughs> Thanks, Surya. Yeah. yeah, so you've met um, most of our team. A couple of people have left, but we've got, we've got a moth light on. I don't know how I'm doing on time, Joe. But you can uh, just give me a quick warning and I, I can uh, wind up quickly. But I'll just take you to our 
moth light. We've got a black light out and we've been getting some amazing insects. The insect fauna, invertebrate fauna here is just astounding. And today's our first day where it's actually stopped raining. So we've, uh, I can actually walk around with my laptop now. Otherwise it's just been pouring rain and pretty miserable. If but you can, if you can still basically. hear me, Sandesh, can you still hear yeah, me? Yeah, I, okay. I, I, the, I can hear you fine. The screen froze. Um, we still hear you loud and clear, but we can't see, we can't see what you're seeing at the moment. Okay. Okay. Let me just, uh, stop here. I think I'm walking too fast. All I'm right. just going to get to the black light. Yep. To the moth light. And then I'll stop here. Yeah. That, that would be the perfect spot to end off Sandesh. Oh, here we go. You're back. Okay. I'm back here. Come run just quickly, quickly. Give us a, let us know what all you've, you've, uh, Hi. <laughs> How's your insect time been in the Siang? Oh, it was very nice. Oh, we got so many interesting insects. You can see from right here, so many beetles, flies and honeybees here and primate is here. Some cool moths here. You can see all the insects. <laughs> so Ranjit's being very modest. He's probably going to be naming the most number of species on this trip he's um every other day he comes up to me and says this is a new species this is a new species so he's probably got a dozen new species every day uh so yeah lots of cool things that we're going to be seeing and keep um keep in touch over the next month or two and there's going to be a lot of exciting new discoveries we're going to be posting up Sandesh, thank you so much. Oh, I am so jealous of you and your team right now in such an amazing area and finding so much new biodiversity. Uh, and best of all, you're going to bring it back to everybody, Sandesh. And that's what's so important. We have to know what's out there. We have to know what we're, we stand to lose. Sandesh, thank you so much for the work you're doing and the work of your team. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, everyone. Have a great uh, World Biodiversity Day. And Thanks for doing this.